You dare to challenge me? Ah! Ah! All right, folks, Will here again with Happily Ever Outdoors. I hope that you are having an awesome week. I've got a lot of really cool projects in the works, a lot of great videos that are coming up, but I had to stop everything so I could do this video real quick for you guys. Because we've been challenged by our friend Carly over at the last Grown Up in the Woods. And this is gonna be the five favorite backpacking gear challenge. We've been super, super busy, so this is actually one of my lunch break videos. Now, I came out to one of my favorite spots out here in the woods. It's a nice spot where I can pull up off the road, uh, where I can get back in the woods to do videos and stuff. But as you can see, the forest behind me has been thrashed by this last storm that came through. We got some heavy snowfall and it just busted up a lot of these weaker trees. I don't know how well you guys can see back there, but there's actually a power line that runs parallel to the main access road to get back here. And that power line is just completely demolished. So I uh, had stopped, parked my truck to get around the first tree that was falling in the road. And I actually had to get off the road and get out into the woods um, because the power line is down everywhere. So pretty crazy. So given the fact that we've got so much stuff leaning all over the place, we're gonna find a nice quiet spot to hunker down away from all of this so we don't have a tree drop on us while we're filming this video. Okay, so once again, the point of this challenge is to talk about your five favorite pieces of backpacking gear. Now, full disclosure, I'm not really a big time backpacker. Most of my hikes are pretty much day hikes, do a lot of camping, I'm into you know survival and a little bit of bushcraft. Um, so I wouldn't really consider myself to be like a subject matter expert on you know long distance backpacking trips but this is still going to be five of my favorite pieces of gear that definitely fall into that kind of lightweight or ultra lightweight category and it's stuff that you certainly would use on a backpacking trip all right so first up the k-bar tactical spork if you've watched any of my cooking videos or cooking gear reviews you've probably seen this thing many times before um, and i really really like it some people are into just the regular sporks or they like the like ultralight titanium sporks but this thing has worked out really well for me and it's still really pretty lightweight all things considered this is like a really sturdy like heat resistant plastic but just a really good sturdy spork i like that it has a nice long handle on it so you don't feel like you're using some itty bitty teeny tiny thing you know it's big enough to be functional um, but it also has a built-in serrated knife which works pretty good so i think that's pretty cool you've kind of got a you know all-in-one little system right there so this is definitely going to be my current favorite outdoors eating utensil now if you guys watch my videos for any length of time you probably know i'm a big fan of knives so no matter what kind of trip i'm going on i'm gonna have a decent knife i just don't go in the woods without one and i'm not really big on carrying itty bitty knives either i want something that's fairly substantial so for my number two pick it's going to be the mora cans bowl now this is actually a decent sized knife. It's really nothing to scoff at. It's a little bit thinner blade, you know, than you would see like on a heavier bushcraft knife. But the trade-off is it's really lightweight. You've got a nice full size handle there and uh, you've got a 90 degree spine for striking a ferro rod. This thing keeps a really sharp edge very easily. This is also stainless steel, so this would be easy to maintain um, on a longer distance trip. You've got a plastic handle here with a rubberized grip, so everything about this really makes it practical, in my opinion, for hiking or backpacking, and you still get a good sized knife. Next up, we have the Survivor Filter Pro water filtration system. This is a really nice little compact uh, pump style water filter system. Of course we know access to safe drinking water is imperative, especially on a long distance trip where you're not going to be able to carry out enough water to sustain you for the whole duration. I like this kit because it's compact, it's lightweight, and it's reasonably priced too. It's also got some of the best filtration ratings on the market. It's going to take out viruses, heavy minerals, all that nasty stuff, so you know you're going to be good to go. So definitely one that I would recommend. There are some systems out there that maybe are a little bit heavier built, um, but they're generally going to have more weight, and they're also going to be a lot more uh, expensive. So I think this is really one of the best values out there today. So for number four, we have the Ultimate Survival Technologies Folding Stove. Now, is this the absolute best folding stove 
on the market? No, but I love it because it's really, really functional and you can pick them up at any Walmart, a lot of different stores for like five bucks. It's also relatively compact, it's super lightweight. It folds up nice and easy. You can see when it is folded up, you have some space if you want to carry some fuel cubes, some things like that. You could stash those inside there, close it up, and you'd be good to go. And for something this small, this compact, this cheap, um, it's got a lot of functionality. I mean, you could use this, you know, to burn wood and things like that if you're in an area where that's allowed. You could also use it with fuel cubes. Um, you could even use it with like an alcohol type stove, even if maybe you made one of those little like soda can stove. You can put that inside there and you could use that as a little bit more substantial of a pot stand. It's also going to give you a little bit of a windscreen if you got it set up right. So for the money, I think this is one of the best stoves of this type on the market. And for number five, we have the Olight. I believe this is the HS2 model headlamp. Now this is a little more of an expensive headlamp. I believe these go in the US for around 70 bucks right now. But this is one I actually won in a giveaway and I'm super glad I did because it is an awesome, awesome headlamp. So some of the things I like about this headlamp, it's got a nice, sturdy, really comfortable elastic strap. And you can see you've got like your battery pack on the back of the strap. And so you just have a nice like small headlamp in the front. So this thing is really comfortable to wear. I mean super super comfortable and it's really bright too. It's also got um, adjustments on it so you've got a high and a low. And another cool feature is the fact that when you turn it on and off you can see it actually dims. It doesn't just straight you know turn on or off. So that's really great so your eyes don't get you know shocked when you're in the dark. Now this thing is also rechargeable. I think it's like what you call a micro USB like you see on most uh, you know cell phones so you just plug the thing in and you can charge it up it's also got I believe an 18 hour battery life and it actually will give you an audible warning when the battery is getting low so that you'll get a heads up another cool thing is that in an emergency let's say you were in the middle of going down a long trail in the middle of the night and your battery starts going dead and you had like a battery pack you could plug that straight into the headlamp and run it off of that um, in order to get you by one other thing I forgot to mention is that it does still have a tilt function on the front there. So if you wanted it straight forward or maybe you were like going downhill and you wanted more light on your feet and so you weren't blasting at people walking in front of you, um, you can do that as well. So right now this is one of my personal favorite uh, pieces of gear that I have. I really, really like it. Obviously my favorite headlamp so far. So if you're looking for a quality headlamp with some of those features I mentioned and you're willing to spend a little bit of money, this is definitely one worth checking out. All right guys, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. Again, the purpose of this challenge was just to show you five of my personal favorite backpacking items. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, these are the five items that I would choose to go out in the wood. And that doesn't necessarily mean they're the absolute best in that category either. It just means that they're five of my personal favorite kind of based upon the price and the design, the features and all that good stuff. Now, if you want to check out any of the gear I mentioned in this video, I will go ahead and drop the links in the description below. I'll also have Carly's information from the last Garn Up in the Woods, the person who challenged me to do this video, and I encourage you to check out her channel as well. Now, before we close out this video, there's one more thing I've got to do, and that is to challenge five other YouTube creators to do this video as well. So hopefully you guys are all willing to do these videos because I would love to get all of them together and make it into a playlist. First, I want to challenge Vandy's Call to Adventure. Now this is actually a pretty new YouTube channel for 2018. Just got a handful of videos, but he's putting out some really good stuff, especially his cooking videos. So I certainly think it's one that I'm excited about and uh, I would encourage you guys to check him out. I think it's gonna be one to watch in 2018. So Vandy, I'm calling you out. What are your five favorite pieces of backpacking gear? Next, I want to challenge Nature Tech Family. This is also a really great smaller channel, but it's a family-oriented channel. Mom and dad both have a lot of experience in the outdoors. They're also educators and uh, spend a lot of time in the national parks and everything, so I know they have a lot of experience out in the woods. So I want to hear your top five. Also, Dan Human, another good friend of mine, um, has a lot of experience in search and rescue, also uh, teaching like survival courses and stuff like that, so I think that'll make for another really good video. Number four is going to be Hiking with Sean. If you've seen his channel, he definitely spends a lot of time out on the trail. So I know you've got some gear, buddy. I want to hear your top five. And last but not least, I want to hear from Yankees Outdoor Adventures. 
Now, I know, Yankee, you're not a big gear guy. We've had a few little uh, talks about that. I know you're all about keeping it minimalist, um, keeping it simple in your life and the time you spend out in the woods. And that's why I think it would be really interesting to hear your perspective. So who knows, maybe for you, your top five will be the only five pieces of gear that you take out in the woods. I don't know. And you can count your hat as one if you need to. But I still want to hear from you, Yankee. I'm calling you out, so I'll be watching for that video. By the way, guys, if you're not familiar with Yankee's Outdoor Adventures, um, he's a pretty cool channel. He's doing a lot right now to collaborate and to help out the small outdoors content creator community. Um, so definitely go over and check him out. By the way, I will also have links in the description below for all of the five channels that I just called out on this video. I encourage you guys to check them out. I would certainly recommend each and every one of them. Great small outdoor content creators, and that's why I want to see them do this video. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave your comments and questions below. And until next time, stay happy, stay outdoors.